Hello everyone and welcome back to my Beyond History series in Kerbal Space Program 1.1.3. In this episode we begin by bringing some of our Kerbals back home. Uh, we apparently have seven Kerbals on board Moonport 1 right now. I thought that that might be a, a few too many. And besides that, we have a lot of Kerbals who don't have any experience yet, like Letris, Kerman, and uh, actually, you know, I have Let uh, Lara Kerman in this pod, but Lara does have experience, so maybe we'll keep Lara here and bring back Chadger. Uh, I feel like it's more important to have more experienced engineers at this point. Uh, that might be a good thing, though we have quite a lot of uh, pilots. Well, we could bring Felipe back. I think... I think that might be good. Yeah, get uh, get him some extra experience. So yeah, let's do that. So Lara, transfer out to here. Okay, and where is Philippe? I think it's Philippe actually, not Felipe. But all right. So it was only a short stint over here for Philippe and. I think Megan and uh, Gletris have been here for a while. I'm not sure, though. I really should keep track of our crews. But anyway, and how much they're spending, how much time they're spending in space. But we'll see. Anyway, let's just bring them back and continue from there. Uh, we do have another Orpheus 2, this spacecraft right here, uh, already built and ready to be sent. And uh, people have been pining for some some scientists out here. I think that's a good idea. So our next crew will have uh, still one pilot, I suppose we have to have, but otherwise, I don't know. Actually, we don't have to have one pilot. We've got a four avionics unit on the tail, as well as the Delta avionics package up there. So we could just send uh, maybe an uh, engineer and two scientists. We'll see. All right, uh, but time for undocking. We have 1,100 meters per second, which is plenty to transfer back. Okay, and let's be careful here, and shut down. Okay, let's see where we ended up. Uh, still pretty high on the Earth periapsis. And this apoapsis is after escape. So let's check that we can, you know, get into the atmosphere and everything. Very important that we don't just stay out here forever. And it looks fine. We have the Delta V. Okay, we'll fine tune it at that maneuver. Okay, off we go. Away from the moon. A little bit too much though I really don't want to skip out so let's uh, let's see if 20 will work hmm do I want to do I want to risk these guys on 20 uh, all right 25 that should be good enough right I feel like I should be quick saving but I'm not gonna quick save I'm gonna just go with it 25 should definitely bring us down directly right every time I do this I somehow managed to skip regardless of what number I pick but we'll see all our supplies should be in the pod I'm gonna unlock the pods fuel and yeah. decouple the service module okay entering the atmosphere we need to turn descent mode on serious re-entry effects periapsis going up because we're getting the lift. 7 G's already. I didn't think it should pull this many G's. 8 G's? I mean, when it has the scent mode on, it shouldn't be pulling this many G's, right? 8.5 G's. Well, we're definitely not going to be headed back into space. So that's good. So we'll have to think about that. Maybe 25 kilometers is a little bit too steep. Though we're still going up here. We're still going to uh, uh, go up to 120 kilometers or so. So if we really want to stay in the atmosphere on the single pass, we are going to have to go to 25 kilometer periapsis, it seems like. 
Still get a little bit of lift here, too. Well, uh, we have slowed down, but it's gonna be a long trip down to the surface, because we're already going fairly slowly, and um, we're still at 30 kilometers in altitude. This is slower than usual, too. Has something changed? It feels like some. I mean... Yeah, I would rather come down a little bit quicker at this point. But, alright. Well, I guess we have to physical time warp, otherwise it's gonna take forever. Let's release the forward heat shield. And arm the parachute. We are in the Pacific Ocean, uh, northeast of Australia. So, that's good, I think. Okay, splash down, and recover vessel. Alright, so some parts came back, but more importantly, 8 experience for Philippe, 6 for Megan, and 8 for Gletris. So, they all advanced to level 1, and we really need to figure out how to level them up, them up more. I mean, a trip to the moon only gets you to level 1. Imagine that. That's, uh, I mean, and, you know, some of them actually were on the surface of the moon. What more did they expect these Kerbals to do exactly? Anyway, I mean, it seems like RP0 might have wanted to rebalance exactly what they get experience for, because that's a heck of a lot of experience. I mean, as far as, you know, real life is concerned, landing on the moon is pretty much all you're going to get. So, yeah, I don't know. Okay, well... Anyway, they are at level 1. Let's send some scientists over now, I think. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, so here we have Loden Kerman, Staley Kerman, and Gus Ray Kerman. Loden Kerman is a new scientist, uh, no experience. Staley does have a rank 1, so uh, hopefully that'll help in the research lab. And Gus Red is a rank 1 engineer. So uh, here we go. I'm just going to control this with smart ASS. I'm not going to use a KOS script, and that's because this is a pre-KOS rocket. And I haven't written up the script for it anyway, and I just feel a little bit better with the Kerbals on board controlling it myself. So, uh, starting off with SAS, throttle up, and ignition. And launch. Off we go. Unfortunately, it's not really easy to come up with a cheaper rocket than this to launch the Orpheus system. So, I don't see any particular reason to replace it. Once we bring the previous spacecraft back, it only takes 11 days to build this right now. Okay, igniting the core engines. Okay, booster set. And throttle up. Okay, launch escape system I think can go now. So, launch escape system separation. Okay, getting ready for stage separation. Five seconds. And separation. And ignition. And the J2 is good. I suppose we could make the launcher lighter. I mean, this is a lot of extra fuel, it seems. I think it was made this way specifically with the intention of compensating for failure in the, one of the first stage engines, since, you know, the NK engines are a little bit finicky. And shut down, 260 by 167. Alright, let's head for the moon, 3800 meters per second left it says. I forget if this is one of the ones that lie about the Delta V or not, we'll find out. Okay. Ignition. And this plot should uh, get us to the point where our descending node and periapsis are at the same place, so we can correct inclination and get into orbit at the same time. That's just for convenience, otherwise our relative inclination to the station is 16.5 degrees. Okay. Preparing for a shutdown. Okay, shut down. 
we do want to smash this stage into the surface, so we'll probably do most uh, the rest of the correction with the spacecraft. So let's ditch this stage. Um, oh yeah, it has separatrons, so it's going to be pushed back and it might survive. Darn it. Oh well, let's see what happens. Um, I don't even see where it ended up. Okay, well anyway. Okay, that was the plan. Alright, so this is on its way, but uh, yeah, we did not successfully crash the J2 stage into the moon. Darn it. Well, anyway, let's get on over to the moon. Okay, approaching the moon now with our plot ready. And so this will get us into orbit and also get us an encounter within about six kilometers of the station, possibly less than that if we do a little bit of RCS tweaking. Okay, something's up with the staging here. I'm hoping that doesn't cause any forward problems. Well, we're about to find out. Throttle up. Well, they have lit, so we're good, despite whatever is going on over here. And looking at the close approach distance. Um, well, okay, we're a little bit off in timing, I think. So 16 kilometers, but still pretty good. Now this means we still have seven people on board Moonport 1 then. So it would be nice to transfer some back, but we, all, we have the transfer demon as well which can carry two back. What we have already constructed might be a good question to ask at this point, just in case we need to rescue it. This UDMH depot probably could. Moonport resupply mission could too. I guess we have options. We really need to ditch the four fuel cells we carry with this. After all, they get dumped with the service module and we don't really need them. I don't ever use them. We could dump the hydrogen and oxygen as well. They're a legacy of a time when we didn't have these particular solar panels. We were using weaker solar panels that didn't uh, that were a little bit tighter on the power margins. Okay, well, I have to figure out where exactly I'm going to dock this. That is the transfer demon right there. Well, wow, there's sure some additional lag around here now can't tell if it's the spacecraft or the station. I mean, the station, we've trimmed some parts, so it shouldn't be lagging as much as it used to. But look at that. Look at that stutter. The uh, target is running away from us. Come on. Don't do that. And... Alright, we have connection. And... The staging is still weird. Okay, we're connected... Let me go back to the tracking station and come back here and make sure the staging gets sorted out. Okay, after not only going back to the space center and coming back over here, but also restarting the game, it looks like everything seems to be alright as far as, well at least we have all the things in stages and the stages go from 0, 1, 2 and so forth. So that's all sorted out. We do have a slight rotation, but I'm not going to correct that because we have so many little RCS ports, if we try and use them to correct it, it'd be a little bit overwhelming with all of them puffing away. It's just not a good idea. Um, we really need a uh, reaction wheel on here somewhere. Uh, I think right now there is zero reaction wheels on this station. And that's something we ought to fix. Yep, uh, though, it, you know, we don't want to just send a reaction wheel over. But first things first, let's see, where are our scientists? We want to make sure our scientists get to the lab. So Loden and Staley. So transfer crew, transfer Loden. Of course, we have to give them some data to crunch. We don't have any in the science lab right now. Okay, so there are two of them in there. And... Yeah, we just need to get them some data. So there are a few ways of doing that. Of course, we could send a Kerbal to the surface using any one of the many vehicles. And of course, we would be trying to get to the surface somewhere other than our base for once. Uh, we need to go to a different biome. 
So that is an interesting thing to try. Otherwise, we could send a probe, of course. And uh, a probe that not only goes to the surface, but comes back up here in particular to bring the science back up. So those are two things. But I will save that for another episode. This time, the next thing I want to do is um, refuel our nervous stage. I think we're all right to do that. It takes 31 days to finish building. Well, we've got seven crew here. That's a bit annoying. And only one crew at moon base one. But I think we can wait 30 days. I Well, I was talking about using the transfer demon to bring crew back. I'm just a little bit nervous because this is all the food, water, and oxygen this contains. Unless, uh, oh wait, I've got another tank there. All right, not quite as bad. And it's got about half a supply of liquid hydrogen. I hope that that's enough to get back to low Earth orbit and dock with our station there. But that's a question mark, of course. But yeah, just to save ourselves some life support supplies, maybe we should do that first. So, if we are to transfer some Kerbals back and get them into Earth orbit, um, Chagger Kerman does not have any experience right now and could do with a transfer back home in order to get that experience. Um, Chagger isn't the one that we just sent to you, right? No, Gus Fred is. Okay. All right. Where is Chagger Kerman? Joan is there. Okay, ship manifest just took a really, really long time to transfer a Kerbal is what happened right there. Do we really have uh, both Kerbals in there? Um, it only shows Joan right now. Chadger. It's in the Gemini lightweight lander for some reason. Oh, this can only carry one Kerbal? Hmm. I thought this could carry two Kerbals, this Mark 1 lander can advanced. Hold on, let me uh, tell it not to override stock crew transfers. Otherwise this wouldn't be highlighted in blue. Blue indicates that there's space. Okay, now we have Joan and Chadger in the Mark 1 lander can advanced. Uh, I think Ship Manifest thought there was only space for one in here even though there's space for two. Don't ask me why. That's a strange thing. Okay, so we'll fill her up with uh, Fubar and Oxygen and then send them back to Earth orbit. Okay, I think we're ready to go now, so undock. And, uh-oh, it only shows Chadger in here. What the heck? Well, it says Jones Inventory. I guess this is why we have the problem. Oh, I, I think I understand now. The problem is that we only have IVA view for one Kerbal. That's why Ship Manifest got confused. Uh, they added the extra Kerbal in via just a configuration file. And, of course, the original lander can only carries one. So that, that was the root of the problem. This lander can advance carries two, but... Yeah. Alright. Well, here we are. We have 4,576 meters per second. The trick here is rendezvousing with the station and getting the inclinations right and everything. That's not a total guarantee. How much food do we have? 18 days to figure this out. All right, well anyway, we have separated. Let me try and plot something out and see what happens. Okay, we've got our first two maneuvers and these will bring us out into Earth space and also flatten our orbit with respect to the Earth orbit station uh, to about an inclination of 2.8 degrees, which is not bad considering... Well, I mean, it's complicated because around the moon we're going retrograde and we're at a sort of inclination around the moon. And so, yeah. And of course, uh, the station itself is in a 20... Well, it's actually in line with the moon, but uh, it depends on the timing with respect to... Yeah, uh, this is probably the best I can get it. It's only 1,050 meters per second to line up, and then we'll need about 3,000 to bring our orbit down. And I suppose we will probably need a maneuver around here to correct it by 2.8 degrees, which hopefully won't take too much. 
probably about 200. So we're looking at basically using every single bit of our delta v right now. So we'll have to be careful. I can't plot everything out. It won't let me make uh, another maneuver node. On initial plot, uh, I had plotted four maneuvers to uh, rendezvous with the station. And the total cost I added it up was 4,577 meters per second. So that wouldn't have worked so well. So I came up with this plot and this looks better. Uh, we'll see if it works. But uh, this time I don't get a whole lot of forewarning as to whether it's actually out of our budget. Because it's not letting me create another maneuver node. And I don't want to restart the game or go to Space Center or do any, anything that might cause a crash for that matter. So again, hydrogen gas thrusters here, operating at 230 seconds ISP, which I think is modest and reasonable. Given the tightness of the return, and since this is supposed to be able to transfer Kerbals to Moonport and come back without refueling, it's going to refuel in Earth orbit rather than in lunar orbit, we might have to make this a bit bigger. And right now we have a 17 degree relative inclination with respect to to our station. And that could have been much worse. The first time I plotted it out it was like 90 degrees and we had to do a much bigger burn out here. I mean, it's still relatively easy to do any sort of inclination burn. Most of this isn't inclination. As you can see, we're pointing very close to retrograde. Most of it is actually uh, just bringing the orbit down from a high periapsis. We went with the high periapsis because it gave us a better relative inclination. Otherwise, again, we would have 90, but we'd have a periapsis that was much lower. So it was a trade-off. Okay, that's exactly what we needed to do. So now we have the expected 2.7 degree relative inclination. We've got 3,488 meters per second. Let's see what the overall situation is and what we need to do. Now, of course, it is an option to create a version of this with a heat shield, but if we want to be realistic about it, we would need to have a non-ablative heat shield, right? Because otherwise the heat shield only gets to be used once. And uh, while we might be able to play a trick on it, in our case, in Kerbal Space Program, it won't really be legit, though. I guess, you know, if no blader comes off, we'll just say that it is a reusable heat shield. But we could make it so that we just do multiple orbits to bring our orbit back down, and then we don't have to use the engine to do it. And we could use a heat shield for that. If we have a heat shield at the bottom, it sort of complicates the engine placement because we do need a docking port somewhere, and preferably on the crew capsule, so we can't, like, put the nuclear engine on top. Yeah, so some design issues. Interestingly, after I use thrusters a while, it underestimates the delta V. Then when I ignite the engine, it increases the delta V left over. So, yeah, that's another interesting issue. We're pretty far away from periapsis, so I'd rather shut it down soon and go around. So if we can get some good closest approach distance, that'll be fine. Oh, okay. And now that's under, well, almost under, there we go, under 10 kilometers. I'm going to trust Mechjeb on this one. It's usually better in this phase as far as rendezvous are concerned. And wow, it looks like we can get within uh, physics distance or render range, whichever it is. Um, this is indicating 1,200 kilometers, so I'm, I have to bet that that's wrong. We're now two minutes ahead of the target. Let me target negative relative velocity. 1,280 meters per second. Um, well, I hope there's more juice here than it's showing. Here we go. Okay, it did go up a bit, but it's not a huge amount. Everything's very tight here. Yeah, we might have to send a tug out after all. It doesn't look like... I mean, you can take a look. We've now gotten to the point where the remaining delta V in this is less than the relative velocity to the target. Well, it was a nice try. But we obviously have some work to do as far as this system is concerned. 
we need a little bit left over so that we can manage you know moving about orienting properly we're still going really fast with respect to the target even after we shut down here I'm gonna leave 10 meters per second in here for RCS purposes and switch to spaceport 2 and we have to get that tug away immediately let's extend our booms Wait. I thought I saw it, but... Okay, there it is. Fortunately, we still have a lot of fuel in this tug, so... Of course, the longer we take with this rendezvous, the further away we get from the station. Well, this little tug is having the time of its life, really, because it's free of the lag around the station now. And also, it's been docked for a long time. Of course, the interesting thing about this tug is with 4,474 meters per second, it could probably rescue um, the transfer demon from all sorts of high orbits, especially since the transfer demon is only like 5 tons. Well, after it's empty of fuel, of course. Okay, we have connection. All right. Well, hmm... Um, uh, it's a little bit dangerous to use our thrusters, but yeah, let me just lock the hydrogen. It's got to be a little bit cumbersome, but we might as well not waste it. Apologies for this, we'll keep it at low thrust. Okay, we're seriously brute forcing it now, going with a relative velocity of fifth, nearly 50 meters per second. But that'll get us to a close approach distance of 2 kilometers. I suppose it'd be even better to have tugs that use the candle engines. Okay, we are now approaching the station. And it's just a matter of where we want to dock at. And of course, it's going to be a little bit cumbersome to try and align with the docking port and dock with no RCS ports on the tail end of this, but... I think it'll be all right. Technically, we could dock here. This is actually a permanent module, even though it was a supply vessel. But uh, it's permanent because it's got the containment for our material kits. Uh, a grand total of uh, 714 material kits it looks like we got out of exploding those various parts. Um, other than that, this is a supply vessel and that's a supply vessel, so we don't want to dock there. We could dock on this or this docking port, and n either of those would be fine. Uh, they're not going to get in the way of anything. So, I think that would be a good idea. The top ones would be the best. Okay, and we have connection. And we have docked. That transfer demon is still pretty darn big compared to this station, but we got it in, and so does it work really? I don't know. Uh, obviously, it didn't have quite enough fuel, so no, basically, the answer is no. Um, we don't really want to have to refuel it over at the moon until we start doing ISRU. Well, anyway, we have a lot to think about as far as this sort of thing is concerned, but um, well, there's been an episode of moving Kerbals back and forth. We moved three Kerbals back to Earth, we launched three Kerbals to the Moon, and we brought two Kerbals back to Earth orbit. So, yeah. Anyway, uh, next time, the first thing we need to do is refuel our Nerva. And after that, uh, well, we have to take care of that Uranus ambassador, but basically we still have quite a bit of time before we get to any launch windows to interplanetary destinations. That's why we're doing all this Earth-Moon stuff. Maybe I'll cook up some ISRU thing. I'll have to see what parts we have available for that. So yeah, on that note, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you next time.